We present Diffusion Co-Policy, a method for planning sequences of robot actions that synergize well with humans on physical collaborative tasks. Human-robot collaboration requires sharing task representations, precision, and real-time mutual adaptation. To this end, robots must be able to express multimodality, execute actions on a wide range of frequencies, such as impulses or constant forces, and act in a temporally consistent manner. Prior works in human-robot interaction have generally fallen along a spectrum defined by the degree to which the human is modeled. On one end, methods that explicitly model the human must discretize the state action space to tractably solve for robot actions. Other works trade off interpretability to learn latent spaces of human behaviors used for robot planning or policy learning, and demonstrate more dynamic behaviors in the continuous state action space. In this work, we further advance the use of generative modeling in HRI by directly predicting sequences of future human and robot actions. Recent successes in learning single agent behaviors with the fusion probabilistic models, including demonstrating multimodality on sequential tasks, show promise in application to human robot interaction. We propose leveraging diffusion models to learn robot policies for human robot collaborative tasks, which we call diffusion co policy. We are motivated by the example of collaborative table carrying, a challenging physical task where a team must non-verbally negotiate both high-level path planning and short-horizon navigation around obstacles. In particular, we explore whether diffusion policies can effectively learn to interpret partner behaviors with respect to shared task representations and mutually adapt to humans in real time. Diffusion co-policy is a diffusion model that takes as input a sequence of past human actions and table states augmented with map information and outputs a sequence of future joint human-robot actions. The inputs are embedded, then concatenated as conditioning variables for sampled noise, which undergoes several denoising iterations through a transformer-based decoder to produce a sequence of joint human-robot actions. Predicted robot actions are then directly executed on a task with a live human in the loop. To train the co-policy, we collected a human-human demonstration dataset on the collaborative tasks. Here are some test map configurations used in evaluation. We baseline against several state-of-art imitation learning methods and two versions of diffusion code policy. First, we conducted a co-planning evaluation in a simulation environment where each method executed joint actions without a human in the loop. We found that diffusion code policy conditioned on past human partner actions, or CODEBH, outperformed all state-of-art baselines. Next, we conducted user studies where the user teleoperates a robot alongside a policy or planner. In a simulation environment, we evaluated task performance. We hypothesized the diffusion policies will achieve a higher success rate than other methods, given its demonstrated multimodal capabilities. In a real environment, we further explored whether the policy was affected by the initial table configuration. We hypothesized that the diffusion method should not see this interaction effect. In the first user study, diffusion co-policy significantly outperformed all state-of-art imitation learning baselines, supporting our hypothesis. We highlight some interesting behaviors. In this first example, Diffusion Co-Policy demonstrates an understanding of the task on unseen map configurations. Here, the human begins by pivoting to let the robot lead. Next, the robot turns the table to avoid hitting the obstacle. And finally, the robot avoids colliding with the wall by acting as a pivot for the human. Furthermore, we see overall greater map coverage by the diffusion policies in the novel unseen map test setting. Second example, we see mutual adaptation and proactivity by examining two separate rollouts with the same initial configuration. In this first rollout, both agents initially decide on different strategies but adapt to the outcome. In the second rollout, the robot takes leadership when the human does nothing initially. In this third example, we see that conditioning on past human actions leads to different learned behaviors. Without human action conditioning, 
the robot acts passively. With past human action conditioning, we see proactive behavior. We also investigate the quality of interaction in simulation by looking at interaction forces. These are forces that don't contribute to motion and are generally considered wasteful. Therefore, closer to zero is better. We observe closer to zero interaction forces over all simulation evaluations. Binning the interaction force magnitudes and normalizing them across all trajectories shows that code DPH exhibits lower interaction forces than other methods over most parts of the trajectories. Next, we test it on a real robot setting where the table is set with two initial configurations, one with the robot in front of the obstacle and the other with the human in front. In the second user study, we verified that all methods except BC, LSTM, GMM do not experience a significant interaction effect with the initial configuration of the robot, supporting our hypothesis. We further investigate the varied performance of BC, LSTM, GMM. Here, we see that code DPH can work with the human to move both below and above the obstacle. Meanwhile, BC LSTM GMM is affected by the initial configuration and therefore less robust to multimodal outcomes that arise from human-robot interactions.